Hello everyone, welcome back to the next episode of The Monty Method with myself, Ringo8781. Uh, I've gone full Jürgen for this today. Um, someone pointed it out, one of my mates pointed it out when I was on a little uh, FaceTime call with them that I look like Jürgen Klopp with me gigs on. So I thought, yeah, okay, go on, we'll do it for the, just for this one video. Um, today's video, um, I'm not going to be talking about what's happened, although you can see on the screen, it's going quite well. Uh, we are now onto the 11th of January. Um, I feel like... We're sort of just there and there about still. There's not really been any progress made, anything like that. Although we did beat PSG um, a little while ago at the start of the season, which set us up quite nicely. Um, they then beat us in the return fixture, which was the first game back after the winter break. I'll just show you. It's our first loss in the league. We've only lost two games all season. One against Leipzig in the Champions League group stages and one against PSG in the league. Um, so we've, we've built the team, you know, you, you all know about that. Um and we've used um, the data analyst pool to find some good young players. Um, one of them being uh, Angelo Fernari, who you guys saw in the last video when he came on leaps and bounds and he's been very, very good this season. Um, what I'm going to be showing you though, and it's something I've touched on um, previously, is using a program called Tableau to scout and identify the best young players. I've not spoken about using it to find young players. I've just spoken about using it to find players overall. Um, so what I've gone ahead and done, I'm just going to load up my uh, my scouting tab now. It's going to take a little while because I've got a few programs up and running. Um, I am looking at getting a new processor for this laptop because the laptop itself is fine. Um, it runs the game really well. It's just when I'm, I'm playing. It goes a bit, mm, a bit skew if. Um, so I'm just going to load up the player search feature here, which is um, a brilliant feature. For those who don't know, it shows absolutely everybody within your world knowledge. Um, so if you've got a 95% world knowledge, it'll load up 95% of the database that you know. Um, what I've gone ahead and done um, is I've highlighted those interested in a transfer because there's literally no point in doing it to those who aren't um what i do is i change as you may have seen in the past i change with the little pinwheel here i change that to be an unsure because they're the type of ones that you know you just go yeah i mean there's a little there's a little extra tenor they tend to say yeah nice one um so that's what we go and do with that uh, and then once once that's done um you can you can filter away so what i've done when it decides to load for me. I do apologise for this, everybody. I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's very hit and miss, my laptop. I recorded the video the other day and I had Spotify in that runner and it was perfect. No issues. I'm recording the video today. I've literally got Tableau in the background as well as FM and it's just not having it. Um, maybe, maybe, I can invest in a gaming computer. Maybe. Um... <laughs> Sorry, it's taking the piss. I'm gonna have one <laughs> while it's loading. Okay, so we're back. Um, me slow as he all hell. Laptops decided to load. Um, so this is the screen you get presented with in your player search screen, and I'm just gonna show you. Uh, like I said, the little pinwheel is set to ensure for both loan and transfer. And then on the edit search feature, what you want to do. Um, I wanted it to include my players as well, so I could compare whether my young players are performing. So if you click the little exclude button, you can just untick Marseille, whatever team you are. Uh, 18 to 21, you can do younger if you want to. It's entirely up to you. I'm just sort of showing you how to do it. And then what you want to do is on the little add condition, you want to hit the drop down. You want to go to club and then division. And then division is the first one. Then you want to add it again and change this little drop down from and to or. So then all I've done is done the top five European. Uh, I've done Portugal, England, Germany, Serie A, La Liga, um, and Liga. So I've done six. Uh, and then what you want to do as well, this is very important, because although there's players that aren't um, playing who are wonder kids, what I want to do is I want to see the people who are getting game time, and that's critical, because you see some young players at the age of like 17, 18, and we're getting a lot of minutes that would suggest that the 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 better players within the game. Um, 
I tend to stay away from wonder kids who don't get any first team football. Because uh, obviously, like when you're playing, uh, I don't know how you guys do it, but I like to loan the guys out at a young age. Um, I, I, I don't know who this quote's from. I believe it was Marcel Brands. And it was if a player isn't playing ch- uh, first team football between the ages of 18 and 21, then he will never be a Champions League level footballer. Um, and, and that's the way I like to do it. So I, I, I had the and minute is at least zero. That means even if a guy's played one minute of a game of football, it'll bring his data up. Uh, and then I'm not going to show you how to make the table. I'm not going to show you what program it is. I just You just know it's called Tableau. There is a link in the description to Matty Lewis, a.k.a. Stein Kelson's channel. The link on the video will take you straight through to his video on Tableau and how to create uh, like a squad profile or, or how to use it. Um, but you can see it. And what I've done is I've sorted by minutes. So the most amount of minutes is our golden boy, Lou Hinnett, on 2,552. And the lowest amount of minutes is Mamuni Uwusu playing over at Torino. He has played a total of two minutes. Little Mamuni. He looks all right, to be fair. But this is why we do it. Um, so I've then added all that into this. This is my little table. Uh, pop that in full screen view for you. It's a bit of a mess. But it's a bit of a mess because there's so many people on there. There's 467, I think it is. Uh, 466 players. So you can tidy this up if you want, or you can just do, you know, if you're looking at it, just a little highlight and a little scroll over. Um, so you can see, based on this table, we've got the average line in the middle here. Uh, anyone above the, the right-hand side, the upper echelon, is um, over the average age, because we're doing it by age. So the average age of all these players is about 19 and a half. So if there's a guy, normally when you're looking at a table like this, you want to look at these guys like, oh, yeah, yeah, these guys are the top right of the average line. It's not the case for this. The average line is just to say, you know, the minutes is 600. What you want to look at is anyone who's above the average line here or these guys down the bottom. Um, they're not playing an awful lot, um, which is why they're down here. I mean, there's, as I say, there's Mohamed Hanani, who's played six minutes. But that's not to say he's not a bad player. That's just to say he's um, he's not played enough yet. Um, so you can see from the table, as we said, and as shown on um, this here, Luca Nets, our starting left back, who we got on a free transfer two seasons ago now, is the number one. He has played 2,552 minutes, and he is age 23, I believe. Oh, he's 21, actually. Um, our Luca. So yeah, Luca Nets, 21 years of age, 2,552 minutes. Um, the next closest minutes-wise is Johnny Alzat, who is a 19-year-old Colombian. He has played 2,233 minutes. So that's saying he... I mean, you can look at it from there. Um, if you don't want to use Tableau, you can look at it like this. However, this is how I used to do it before I made YouTube um, series and a YouTube save, and I did this quite extensively with 1860 Munich on last year's game. Had like an 11 year save with them, um, and found some very good players doing it this way. But it is very hard and very time consuming to drill down and look at these and it just send you a stare crazy, which is why Tableau was so good. And I'm just so glad that I found Stan Kelson's channel. Well, it was, it was his blog actually, uh, through Fox in the Box who is another person who you need to check out. He's a very, very good football manager, YouTuber. Um, so, yeah, check him out. But Johnny Alzate, um, you can see he's played the, the second most amount of minutes. Uh, he is a Colombian central defender. He is a regen, and he looks fantastic. Um, there's a reason he's playing so many minutes. Uh, and then Mikel Diaz, who is our goalkeeper, who was over on loan in Benfica, playing a lot of first-team football, which is what we wanted. Um and so on and so forth. Uh, Strinja Savage is also on there. He is our first choice uh, centre forward at the moment. Um, you wouldn't have seen him. He was one of the guys that the analysts found. Um, but yeah, that, that, the proof was in the pudding there that you know these good young players are playing a lot of football. Um, so what I'm more interested in, um, although you can find the 21 year olds, uh, and you know, so even this guy Ugo Bertelli, he is on loan from me. If we just highlight Hugo Bertelli, he's a fantastic player. But we sent him out on loan again this season because we've, we're quite overloaded in the middle. Um, we're going to get him back next season. And he'll probably be the starting centre mid along with maybe Monchu or Fanari, um, depending on, on how that goes. But you can see, attribute-wise, he's fantastic. But the only problem with loaning them out is a lot of the times they don't develop those traits that you like. Um, but again, you can get him back and you can train them. As long as he's under the age of 23... Adding traits isn't an issue. It's when they get over the age of 23 it becomes a bit more of an issue. Um, so, yeah, 
proof in the pudding there that these good young 21-year-old players are playing a lot of football. But I'm more interested in the younger guys. So what we want to look at, um, the most amount of minutes for the youngest age, which we set for this parameter to 18, is Jorge Rodriguez, who's Portuguese, and he has played 1,650 minutes of football. Um, Jorge Rodriguez, we're going to... The best thing you can do, um, you can just scroll through if you want and look at it for minutes or type his name in. Um, we know that he's played, because of this lovely table, is 1,650 minutes. So I just need to find 1,650 minutes. And there he is. It's Jorge Rodriguez. He is a no-nonsense central defender uh, playing for Chavez in the Liga Nos. And he actually looks decent. Um, decent anticipation and positioning. Six foot three, and he's very fast. He's got a perfectionist personality, very brave and very determined. Uh, really good tackling, heading, marking. He's got very good technique as well, which means he can pass the ball out. Um, it's saying he's a no nonsense centre back. You could probably get away with playing him as a ball player, um, purely because his technique is so good. Although his vision is not the best. Um, yeah. You could definitely get away with the ball player. But you can see there he's played 15 times in the league. Nos, he's also played in the European Under-20 Elite League for Portugal. If you click on his contract info, he's got a minimum fee release clause of £2.9 million. Um, I don't, I've don't. i already sent one of my scouts to have a look at him, but I don't know about you, but I think that represents brilliant, brilliant value for an under-20 Portuguese international who has played a lot of league football at high standard. Um, that's that's just one good example. I've, I, I, let's see if we can find another one. Um, who else have we got? We've got... Um, I'm going to try and find one that I'm thinking might be quite cheap. Um, Mark Hughes. A German called Mark Hughes. Does he look like Sparky? 1,319. Where is he? Where's Mark? I wonder who he plays for. 1,319. Mark Hughes, German central defender. He doesn't look like Mark Hughes, but he's a brilliant centre-back. Oh, my life. He's only 5'11", but he's got good jumping, reaching, really good heading, mark and tackling, aggression. I'll probably play him as a ball in midfielder, you know. He's on loan from Dortmund. Playing for Paderborn. They're in the Bundesliga as well. So he's getting a lot of first team football. 13 appearances in the Bundesliga. Worth 300k. And has got a no release clause or anything? No. Um, he looks great. He looks like a good little player. 300k. Scouting required. Go for it. See? Um, didn't kick a ball for Dortmund's first team. But played a lot of football for the, the, the reserve team. Um... But a very, very good, competent young player. As I say, I'll probably play him as this is the ball winner. To be honest with you, just because he's so little. He could probably play as halfback as well because he's good in the air. But again, there's another example, a nice young, talented footballer. Um, these are the type of guys... So it's normally like along this line, like the very, very bottom average line, that you look at them and you think, well, these guys... Are there or thereabouts? They might just be breaking into the first team. Um, Ivanison Andrade is a Cape Verdean player, 18 years of age, 591 minutes. So let's just scroll on down to 591 minutes. Oh, one of my scouts is already looking at him. I've not put a bid in for him. So the only thing I'm guessing is I've not hit continue yet. We do have Pablo Longoria who puts offers in for players. Um, he might have already done so, but he's a, a Cape Verdean central defender. His DNA, um, which again, another Fox in the Box video DNA. Brilliant, brilliant concept. Um, it's this stuff here, determination, teamwork. And so whatever you want your club vision to be, your DNA within the team to be, um, have a little look at that. Um, he fits in quite well. 20 determination, 12 teamwork, 60 anticipation, decision work rate and natural fitness and 9, 9 and 8, but he's only young so they can grow. Um, he has played, he's playing for Boa Vista, but he did play for Tondela who are in the division below. Um, how much did they sign him for? Oh no, he went on loan to Tondela, but they were playing League and Nos, so he's been playing League football since the age of 17, potentially 16. Uh, when's his birthday? June, yeah, so it's been from 16. Um, very tall, quite fast, 
really good determination, really good anticipation, decent positioning, uh, great at heading, okay at marking, but very, very good in the tackle. Um, he looks great. He looks like a good little player. Is there an analyst report on him yet? No, we do trust those analyst reports so much. But I think he might have, he's either got a minimum fee release clause in his contract then for 550k, or Pablo's just trying to do a madness. Yeah, 550k, okay. Um, 550k for uh, Cape Verde and International. For those who don't know, uh, Cape Verde actually classes as a European country, although it's just off the coast of Senegal. It's a small um, island. It's great for a holiday. There's not a lot there, but it's... The weather's amazing, and there's some mental things to see. Um, I've been there, but <laughs> um, yeah, for a, a Cape Verdean international, five hundred and fifty k loan him out for two, three years. He'll probably end up coming back a very, very, very competent defender. Um, who else is on that little that little line at the bottom there? So oh, don't get me wrong, you can look at these guys, um, but we've seen from like Luke Netch, Johnny Alzat, Felix Peffer, uh, Pfeiffer. Uh, Strange Savage, he plays for us, Eckhart, all these guys are going to be worth quite a bit of money. It's sort of the guys along the lower line you want to have a little look at. So, um, Saeed Zacharia, French, 612 minutes. Let's have a little look at him. So, he's a deep line playmaker playing for Nantes. He has played six times with five appearances off the bench and managed to grab himself a goal. Uh, Saeed Zacharia, again... He's probably not classed as a wonder kid, but to me would probably be around the three stars mark, like a good squad option. Um, but these are the guys who can develop the most. He's always played for Nantes. Um, fairly ambitious personality. Good, good, good physicals and mentals. Very technical too. Um, does he have a little release clause in him? No, he doesn't. But again, worth a lot of scout. Um, I love this, by the way. No one's seen this. Carlo Ancelotti and Marcello Bielsa are scouts for me now. <laughs> um, go ahead, Carlo. You have a little look, son. Invaluable experience as a manager having those guys in your team. I tried to get them in as coaches, but they wouldn't have it. So I just I sod them. Let's get them in as scouts. Um, but again, there's another good, young, competent player. Who else? We've got Eduardo Vera, 649 minutes. Uh, 649. Eduardo Vera. Now, because he's playing for Bilbao, and Bilbao can only sign Basque players, he will probably cost an arm and a leg. Um, he looks okay. He wouldn't probably make it in my team. DNA-wise, he's great. Uh, Attribute-wise, he's quite good. He's scored a few goals in La Liga. Cap for the Spanish national team. Likes to round the goalkeeper, which is a bit of a... Yeah, 17 mil. Uh, they do have all, all have release clauses in Spain, but they would stick to that purely because he's Basque as well. Um, but again, it, it, he's a good option if you want to go pay that money. Um, who else have we got down here? We've got... I like looking because sometimes you find people who have got mad nationalities. Um... Michael West, the young American guy playing a lot of football there. Uh, Wilfred Gononto, he's a real player. So that's another thing you find um, when you're this far into the game, you find those players who the bigger teams are maybe loaned out or sold and they've developed into like decent enough players. Um, let's have a look at McKengo. Clinton Nisiala McKengo, 20 years of age, 659. Here he is again playing for Nantes. Nisiala McKengo. Real life player, central defender, and he is rapid. Um, okay, anticipation and positioning. His marking and heading leads something to be desired, but he, his tackling's great. Probably wouldn't fit in my team, but again, if I was a lower league team, maybe if I was um, like a lower level top division team and I was looking for like a good competent young player who can play across the back line, I'd go for him um, there's Will Fricononto as we mentioned um, he's a beast he is a monster 24 million pounds he's a monster uh, Georges Chom um, playing for Nîmes 
again, solid, competent player. Uh, Pierre Eves Cabel, I, I think, yeah, he was he was there when um, when I was the Game Gun manager. He has developed very nicely. Again, a young young player. Um, but it, it Mamadou uh, Diaby, again, a Malian player. It, it's these type of players that you want to look out for. Um, what a great name this guy's got. Andrei Nakachenchi. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's just something to, to keep an eye on. Um, it's something that's definitely, definitely, definitely worth doing. And it's a scouting method that I used without Tableau in the past, as I've mentioned. But it's something that I've... Um, I've managed to incorporate now through the help. Again, he's a good player, Jules Berry. He's just a solid option. So if you're looking for like a wonder kid, if you're looking for uh, a player that's going to come in and maybe play a bit part for you, or someone who you want to come bring in and loan out because you can see something in them that if they play fantastically from now until the age of 23, they might come in and become one of the best players in your team. Uh, this guy... Revealed to gear, twenty-four million pound playing for Arsenal. He's great, but these are the type of people that I think your scouts sometimes miss or just don't pick up. Um, is an Estonian here, decent young player playing a lot of football. Um, I'm just trying to find one more just to see is there anyone who's like classed as like a wonder kid or someone who's there or thereabouts that we've missed. There's a Tom Jones, a Welsh guy. <laughs> and obscure nationalities tend to help too. Um, you tend to get them a lot cheaper. There's Ramundo Kumbe, who's a Mozambican. 862 minutes. I think we've scouted him before. Because we do look at African countries. Ramundo Kumbe playing for Porto. Fullback. Can also play as a centre back from the looks of it. He can either footed six for four, eighteen cast for Mozambique. Yeah, we have scouted them before. Um, again, he is a wonder kid. It's exactly what it says. He's definitely a central defender. Um, he's awesome. He's awesome. Definitely something to look out for. Um, but that's it, lads. I mean, you can you can change this table to be whatever you want. Um, if we just back out of that, say like you were looking for um, a creative player, if we just remove the, the age in the minutes, um, remove that, remove that, and we wanted, let's see, chances created per 90 versus the assist per 90. Um, we're looking for like the most creative player in the league, uh, we want the chances created per 90. We want to edit the axis of this. As I say, I'm not going to you know, show you how to do this or, or what to do. Um, please check out Matthew's video for that. Uh, we want to change this to 0, 0.0. And we want that to be, let's just say, 2.2 .2 chances created per minute. And we want the assist per 90. To be on an axis of 0, 0.0 and is that 1.2 if you do it by this it, it sorts it out a lot better uh, and let's just do 1.3 and then you want to drop in a little analytics your average line so your average line is down here um which isn't great it's not a massive amount do I need to change this actually entirely? No, sorry, done. So creative player wise, um Miguel Diaz gets a lot of assist per 90, but he's not creating chances. So that's what this is why this table is quite good to look at. Um you want to be looking at like these guys here. So Martin Scatchy, who I've actually highlighted in the last video, is creating half a chance a game and assisting half a game. Um so let's just see how much he's playing. Bless me. So he's playing for Benfica. Uh, did, did, did he? Depends where he's playing. He is a striker. Definitely a striker. Um, he's not played the first team game for them, but he's worth £12 million. Pounds. That's insane. Um, not played an awful lot of minutes. So that would probably suggest that he's, he's maybe not the most creative, not the best. Um, that's... 
in relation to his minutes. So what you can do, you can either add minutes as one of these, or what I tend to do sometimes is do it like this. If you add it as summer minutes, you can add it as a label too, and then show you the most minutes played. Um, so you just get a bit more of an oversight. Again, you can fiddle around with this and make it a little bit better. I can see the most amount of minutes played uh, between these guys. So there's uh, Jose Javier Zamora, Luis Gama, Hannibal Medjury, um Fabio Jao. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at Luis Gamma. Let's just see, because he's 0.34 assists per 90 and chances created is 0.54. Luis Gamma. It's just interesting. It, it, it's a different way of looking at it. He's playing for Braga. He's an attacker midfield left. Uh, he's 19 years of age with 22.5 million pounds. He is a wonder kid. He is wanted by Napoli. Left-footed winger. Um, got all the attributes you would want as a winger. Fantastic little player. Um, who else did we have on there? We had Hannibal Medri. We had uh, Jose Javier Zamora. <laughs> Stephen Moon, Hannibal Medri. Oscar Bob. <laughs> Luis Gamma. Let's go and have a look at Hugo Felix. So it's just the tool, again, Benfica, it's just a tool that it's definitely worth investing time into. He's quite cheap. He's not played a lot of football, though. Um, Minutes-wise, it was suggested, yeah, 245 minutes. So, again, it's best to add minutes into there um, because you want to be looking at the ones who have played the most because they're the most creative, in theory. Uh, Fabio Giao. See chat and our fab. He's playing for Rio Ave and he's creating that many chances as a DM. Ah, he's a deep line playmaker. Um, he's on loan from Benfica. Looks like a very good player. He's played a lot of minutes as it's shown. And look at those average ratings. Um, potentially as a release clause, we're going to check. He doesn't. Um, what's his age in chatting? If he does want to come, how much is he gonna is he gonna want? They'd be unwilling to sell. But it, it it just gives you a better insight into the game and, and into analytics and how to look at them. Um, obviously, the more football they play, in essence and in theory, they're performing better, potentially. See, so Hugo's down there. He's quite a creative player. Um, there's a Canadian bloke on here. Tiago Alexandre. He's probably quite undervalued. David Boringer. I work for a company called Boringer. <laughs> uh, David Festus, Hugo Felix. This Angle Leger, he's played 838 minutes. We're just going to have a little look at him. Um, he's getting assists from the looks of it, but he's not creating chances, which suggests he might be a forward attacking midfielder playing for Lille. Played a fair few minutes as well. Decent. Decent player. So he's creating... He's not creating chances, but he's getting assists. It could be that he's taking set pieces. It could be that he's just whipping a ball into a box and someone's got on the end of it and it, it's not registered. It's like a chance created. I think the, the way the game measures chances created is chances that weren't taken, which is a bit annoying. Um, but I think that's how it measures it because when we look at our team and Montu's well up there, he takes the set pieces and obviously we don't score an awful lot of corners, but his chances created per 90 is like three. He doesn't get three assists per game. So I think that's how it does it. Um, but yeah, again, it's definitely, definitely, definitely a tool that you should invest time and effort into. Um, it It's definitely helped the way I play the game and we found some very, very good players for it. Um, Jose Javier Zamora is playing for one of our uh, our feeder clubs in Albacete Bamp uh, uh He's a Metzala DLP. Probably not for me. Probably not for me. But very technical player. Um, again, a decent squad player, but probably not for my squad. But it's just definitely, definitely. Uh, I've said it to you so many times. It's definitely something we're looking out for, and um, hopefully this video has helped you. Uh, please check out Stein Kelson's video 
that definitely helped me and definitely refined the way that I play the game. Uh, if you do like your analytics and you do like playing the game this way, I'd also recommend a little book here. Um, you can get this on Amazon for about £7. It's Football Hackers, The Science of Art and Data Revolution by Christopher Beerman. It is a fantastic read. I would definitely recommend getting this book. I think it's about six or seven quid, so it's a bit pricey. Um, but it, it just gives you an idea on how things are done in football in real life. And Football Manager being a simulation game tries to replicate real life as much as it can Um and that's the way I play the game, and that's why I love doing this method. Um, but for now, lads, that, thank you very much for your time. If you stayed the whole 30 minutes, I know I've been waffling on a little bit. Um, but thank you very much for your time. Uh, please like and comment on the video. Uh, it, it creates an algorithm, and it pushes me higher up, and it gets me more viewership. Please share the video if you will do. It's very much appreciated as we're trying to make the channel grow. Um, you may have noticed in the background on this side uh, a little final bat t-shirt that I've got hanging up there. Um, that is a little teaser for the next save. We are more than likely going to be going to Turkey. Um, whether that's going to be a Fenerbahce save, a Galatasaray save, maybe a smaller team save, um, and seeing if we can make a Turkish team like the best in the world using these methods that we we found and developed throughout the time at Marseille and EA Gingomp. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Uh, please, as always, stay safe and take care, and I'll see you all next time.